Hello YouTube, I'm Southern Wolverine and this is, of course, Operation Lath, Season 2. So last time, last time, this was the rocket that got bobbed to the moon, mostly, <laughs> and uh, unfortunately left him there. Sorry Bob, um, we'll, uh, we'll do a rescue mission, but we can't really do it right now, unfortunately. As uh, I'm not entirely confident I have the technology to do such a thing. So we are going to go ahead and rebuild this rocket for our Minmus mission since I did take that. I also took one while you were away to do just uh, any sort of science in orbit around Kerbin. So that should not be a problem. And all I'm going to do now is I'm just going to beef up the launch vehicle. Since we know this works reasonably well, just didn't have quite enough oomph, I'm going to try to put this up with a little more power and I can afford to use things like these disconnects now because because I have these, these struts so I can tie everything together nice and strong like so. Now this stuff is not going anywhere. Now of course I still don't have fuel lines so I'm still gonna have to sequence this somewhat carefully. So this is actually what I want. I'm gonna actually launch, let all these run at full power. Now I do think I want to move this down. I want to light this center engine before I disconnect all the external ones. And the, the one large tank as you would expect does end up being slightly cheaper than the two medium sized ones. So economies of scale are somewhat making sense here. And, and one larger component you know, it, it just sort of makes sense geometrically. As you increase the size of a single component, actually the volume increases disproportionate to, you know, the linear dimensions of the element. You know, whereas, because as a, uh, if you increase it, you know, linearly, think of a sphere. If you increase the diameter, the surface area of the sphere increases as the square of the diameter, and the volume increases as the cube of the diameter. Now, it's a little more complicated for spaceship parts, but more or less the same principle. So larger parts are going to tend to be more efficient in terms of carrying fuel. In this case, they are less expensive. It's, in some cases, easier to build big parts than small parts. Although that, you know, sometimes. You know, in any case, it, that makes sense that the large parts would cost slightly less than two small ones. That's all I was getting at, and I spent way too many words talking about that. So, one more thing. Thing. I want to go ahead and put some of these fins on there. And I'm actually going to put them slightly off center, like so. And these are going to help center me up. And I'm putting them off center because I want to go ahead and put some of these solid rocket boosters on here. Just use the little ones. I want to make sure they're disconnected before I eject, uh, before I run out of fuel in the liquid stages. And actually, now that I'm, I'm thinking about it, let's compare. See, that's the the big one. Let's compare. See, the little one is about the same size as one of these. So this has what? A specific impulse. Yeah, here's the problem with the solid rocket booster. Specific impulse, not great. 225 to 240 compared to these liquid engines which are in the 300 range. So that's your reason to limit your usages of the solid rocket boosters. I'm not going to try to do any parachute recovery on any of these parts or anything like that. I am going to go ahead and strut them up in like that. These struts are cheap, you know, 42 each, and if it makes the thing more stable, I'm I'm willing to take take that chance. I do want to fix this though. That would be a disaster. And I'm going to go ahead and put launch struts on here simply because launch struts are going to end up being free. Why? Why you say they're not free? Well, they're not going anywhere, so we're going to recover them. So I have a feeling like they're going to end up actually not, not costing us anything. But I, I don't really need this many, so I'm going to turn off symmetry and just put, you know, like two on here or something. Oh, that is not at all what I meant to do, damn you. I wanted to... Oh, what? Oh, ha <laughs> uh, I thought I was hitting... Alt to copy, when in fact I was hitting the Windows key and popping up my stupid menu. 
All right, whatever. So there we go. There's our launch vehicle, the Moonlander 2, and this will actually be the Moonlander Mark 3. And of course, the mission is still for fame and science and of course money. And of course, we're going to have to drag Jebediah kicking and screaming out of the capsule. And let's see who who did we send around last time? Philo. I think we tried to send Philo on the rescue mission for Bob. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to give him the chance to indirectly rescue Bob by heading to Minmus to get us the science we need, the science to get more parts. And we will change to our operation operation lay flag, which I've still been too lazy to create another version of. We don't need to set up any action groups because we don't have any action groups to speak of. I still... Do I have the... Ooh. I would like to get the Science Junior onto this mission. Hmm. See, I have a lot more power in this launch vehicle, so I feel like I can add... I feel like I can add it in and still be okay. And it... Landing on Minmus is going to be a lot lighter than, you know, a lot less gravity than trying to land on the moon. So I feel like we can get away with that. Because this stage, with all this down here now, this should give us most of the transfer. Yeah, we're going to we're gonna go with that. Get Try to get more science out of this run. And I still don't have ladders. So, <laughs> all right, no... Uh, no sense screwing around with this anymore, I guess. Let's just go for it. Yeah. Okay. Okay, let's fix the disconnects. Okay. All right, so we've got our two missions. Transmitter recover scientific data from space around Kerbin. We're just going to go for recover. I'll just do a EVA report from high over Kerbin or something like that. We're going to land on Minmus. We're going to recover data from orbit around Minmus. Yeah, okay. So that is that is the mission plan. And Jebediah, Jebediah, you rascal. How did he do that? I went back to change something, and he snuck his way into the capsule. No, you don't either, Jebediah. This is Philo's mission. <sighs> That guy, I tell you. All right, we're gonna leave at half throttle here. Fix the staging again so Philo doesn't go down in horrible, horrible flames. And three, two, one, lift off. Power, power to spare. All right, we're gonna keep the throttle down since we <laughs> have more than enough power. And I keep it down until the solid boosters go away, and then we'll. Uh, Throttle up as required, building up quite a bit of speed to the stars. Well, to the moons, anyway. It just doesn't have quite the same ring to it, does it? To the moons! Eh. Okay, now we throttle up. Throttle up, we just lost a ton of thrust. Okay, here we go. Oh, cool, we're actually gonna get. It looks like a sunrise as we go up. That's pretty neat. We are going to fly into the sun. Well, into the light of the sun, anyway. Not literally into the sun. We might send a probe into the sun later, just for funsies. But, uh, it's not the sort of thing we want to do to Philo. That would be bad. And difficult to do at this stage, in any case. Oh, I, actually, I forgot to go through my pre-flight checklist. I did not pop that into view. Yeah, so that's that's one thing that uh, if you're playing this game, it's good to get into a habit of have a little pre-flight check where you go through everything. And of course, in that case, I forgot one of my pre-flight checks. In this case, my navigational check. Oh, uh, Bob, we'll come get you sooner or later, man. I know you're I know you're out there, hoping for rescue, but uh, we do not have the tools. If I can get the large capsule, it will be so much easier to recover him. Because as I was trying to make a two-capsule vehicle before, it proved to be annoyingly difficult slash heavy. So we ended up changing that whole plan around. <laughs> All right. In any case, let's focus on this launch. We'll get you. We'll get you, buddy. We see you out there. So let me go ahead and hide the flags. Not that it matters too much, I guess. 
I'm going to set this to orbit. Plan for success. Plan for success. Set this to stage only so I can keep an eye on my fuel situation. And we are working through it quite rapidly. Alright, come on, stay on target. Actually, speaking of target, where is Minmus? Let's set it as the target. Oh, okay, great. Oh, I actually just passed my ascending node. I'm not sure how much I can do to change that. But I will, I will burn a little bit in that direction in an attempt to build that up. Or to reduce it, rather. Okay, okay, that'll that'll work. That'll at least reduce the, uh, the amount of burn we'll have to do to even that out. Alright, alright, that's good enough. Whoa! We just about burned up that that whole stage. <laughs> okay. Well, you know what that means. Unfortunately, that is going to result in this uh, burn time calculator being somewhat useless because it's going to estimate based on the current weight and thrust of the vehicle, not what it will actually have when we eject a good portion of the, the engines. So what I am going to do is I'm going to go ahead and pump the next stage, activate the main center engine, and we'll try and get this thing to turn. Turn, you pig! All right, this is this is good so far. Actually, this this might be really more than I need. We've got this whole center stage for for orbit circularization, which is which is great. So that should actually, unlike the the Bob Moon mission should leave us this all this for just tr uh, transfer to Minmus. All right, I'm going to start this burn really early because I'm not sure what it's going to end up doing. All right, so farewell to you. Now let's recalculate. Okay, yeah. Full throttle. If anything, I should have started a little bit earlier. But okay. Okay, we should be okay. We'll be a little bit a little bit behind the eight ball, so to speak. But not too bad at all. And our orbital inclination is actually not half bad either. In fact, can I correct that just a little bit more? I know I'm not on the on the ascending node. No, let's just not mess with that. If you're not near the ascending or descending node, you end up just kind of making it wonkier. You end up moving the node instead of just reducing the angle. Or you do a little bit of both or, or something. All right. This is this is getting the job done. Actually, we can probably use a good chunk of this for transfer. Ha! <laughs> it's nice. It's nice to have struts. Thank you, Bob, for uncovering the science we needed to get struts. You were your mission was not in vain, despite your unfortunate moon stranding. Okay, there we go. Made it. Made it to orbit. Perfect. Uh huh. All right. So now I gotta try to set up an encounter with Minmus, which is way out there. So we'll try to do like so. And we're gonna come in a little bit. What is that above it? I guess. So we'll do. Let's see. That's that was near our descending node. So we can correct that with a little bit of that, or at least improve it a little bit. Oh, okay, we lost our <laughs> we lost our encounter though. Okay, let's take a little bit of power out of that maneuver in it. Can probably cur come on. I had you. You know what, I probably short yeah, I shortened it up too much. I will use the fine adjustment given by the mouse scroll wheel in one of the recent er updates. All right, that's not a very good, not a very good encounter. Actually, it looks like we're going in front of it instead of behind it. Not that it matters actually for this case, since we can get into any old orbit and consider it a success. Hmm. Darn it, darn it. Fiddling, fiddling with an orbit. 
And I don't have RCS for my long range corrections like I would normally do, so can't do that. Well, whatever. That'll be good enough for now. I can adjust it. Adjust it on the fly. So where is my node? Let's see. It's got to be down inside. Is in towards the planet. And we're just going to eat electrical charge as we make this maneuver because I have nothing but the uh, reaction wheels working. No RCS. And of course we got to be careful with this fuel because once we get down to this lander stage, or not fuel, but the electric charge, because once we get down to the lander stage we will not have any way to generate any more electrical power. So that's why I got these batteries on here. Actually speaking of which, let's do a crew report. Oh, uh, that's useless. So I will not be able to get that particular mission. We'll have to do a high orbit or I could do one of these. No, I already did mystery goo from here too. So we'll have to do high orbit. That'll be fine. We'll get have plenty of time in high orbit on our way to Minmus. So we'll just get some uh, some nice juicy science on the way. For now we got fast forward, then a one minute burn. Ah, man, these uh these moon missions. Kerbin local system missions feel nice after all these like multi hour missions to Duna and Jewel and Eve, stupid Eve, worst planet ever. Whatever. We need some serious power. I, I will get that damn. I will complete that mission one day. It might have to wait for the final version of the game. It might. Who knows? Who knows when it might be? But damn it, I'm going to land on Eve and bring a guy back. Perhaps not in this season, <laughs> but at some point it will be done. Uh, I wonder if, you know, if we had, I know there are mods that add it in, but if we had like electric powered propellers instead of just jet engines, that could actually make it easier to escape from Eve because you could actually use the propellers in that nice thick atmosphere it has and get uh, you know fly up to altitude and then light some rocket engines up or something like that you know or balloons and I know there was a balloon model I don't know if it's been updated to this version of the game or not but that also would uh, let you get high in the atmosphere and then you know perhaps just detach from the balloon and and shoot out or something and oh, okay okay we're about to uh, burn past our target so better focus on what I'm doing instead of conjecture Alright, this burn is going to have to be fairly precise to get the encounter. Alright, so let's just, uh, I'm just going to eyeball this in now. Well, we got multiple encounters bouncing around here all over the place. Alright, alright. Okay, we're actually kind of past our middle point there. So, so that'll be good. We'll get this high orbit data this high orbit data uh, and we'll get our data from space around minimus with, with a crew report as well so let's go back let's go back we'll fast forward I'll get uh, I'll get to the point where we're gonna land on minimus in this episode I think and then we'll do the recovery do the recovery next time I mean unless the landing goes really quickly and easily or something but uh, Recent history has not proven that <laughs> to be a likely scenario. It looks like we're going to come in in a sort of polar orbit situation. Not a big deal. All right, so let's do some of our science. We should easily be high over Kerbin, so we'll do a crew report. Crew reporting in from space! Transmit! All right, so that should complete that objective. We are around Kerbin. Yay! Mission accomplished. Okay, now we're gonna do gonna do a quick save and a quick EVA report. So that should get us more science. You've recorded your observation. Oh, oh! I was hoping for something funny. Uh, let's go ahead and just transmit that back to review the stored data and transmit. It is nice that we can have multiple reports and things stored up now. We don't have to worry about you know, screwing around and only having enough paper in the module, enough computer space to store a single uh, a single report. So that is no longer a problem. This is a multiple day run out here though to Minmus, which I kind of I'm not sure I was expecting that. 
Okay, so now we're going to get our, I guess I could have refined this encounter on the way. Let's go ahead and set up a burn, see what it's going to look like. Whoa, whoa, not that much of a burn. Forgot how little minimus uh, <laughs> gravity is. Okay, okay, so we'll just... Hello, Minmus, you little icy ball of death. Okay, so that's our velocity, so we're going to be burning in the general direction of not that way. Because we are, of course, going to have to slow ourselves down. Okay, and the great news is we still have fuel left from the, <laughs> the orbital insertion stage. So unlike the last rocket, which just didn't have quite enough, this rocket... We'll probably, we'll probably end up wasting fuel, which is unfortunate. It means wasting money in this current incarnation of career mode. Yet, I'm not too concerned about it, because we have found that the uh, the money doesn't seem to be super tight, unless you, you know, start failing multiple missions or something like that. It uh, shouldn't, shouldn't be too big of a problem. Plus, we'll get a good influx of cash from completing... We'll get a little bit from that one, and we'll get a lot once we get our uh, get our data back from Minmus. So good stuff, good stuff. All right, come on now, just don't fast forward past the burn point because that's going to be fairly important to be precise. Okay, come on, come on, come on, come on. All right. And come on, focus on Minmus for me, please. I won't do it. Come on! There we go. Alright. Yeah, that's right. That's how impatient I am. I'm not willing to wait the 10 seconds for the burn to come up. Oh, you know what? This stage is going to run out of fuel, probably. Um. Well. Is it? Is it? Yes, it's going to run out of fuel, I think on this burn. Whoa, what, did I actually reverse the, I did, I actually reversed the direction of my, uh, I, I overmaneuvered so much I actually reversed my direction around Minmus. That is how easy it is to maneuver around here. Alright, so that should be, actually I still have a little bit of fuel left here. However, I think I am just gonna, come on. I think I'm just gonna throw it overboard actually. Oh, I'm done with you. Thank you. And we'll just light up this next engine. Let's give it the tiniest little burst to separate us. Make sure they didn't screw anything up. Okay. And we'll this actually our our transfer stage has actually become our descent stage. So we should hopefully reach the ground with basically all of that fuel intact, which from experience I found should be more than enough fuel to uh, get us back to Kerbin. All right, so let's do some quick, quick science. Come on, I don't know what's going on with my mouse. Not enough electric charge. That doesn't make any sense. Should have plenty of electrical charge, according to that. Uh, okay, crew reports. The lake beds seem relatively flat. Perhaps we could land there. Yes, that is exactly what I'm going to go for. Just go ahead and send that home. That'll complete part of our mission. Achieve orbit, transfer, recover orbit, from orbit rather. Do an EVA report. Right click, damn you. Thank you. 32 science for recording our observations about the situation. Board and transmit. See what else? What else? Observe mystery goo. Are we still high in orbit over Minmus? Yeah, let's save this for a low in orbit around Minmus, and then I'll do the other one on the surface. Because of course, surface ones are always, always the best science. Ooh, wow! Look, there's Bob way over there. Hi, Bob. And Philo's hoping not to be similarly stranded. <laughs> come on, come on, come around to the node. Oh, okay. Yeah, the the compass, uh, the gimbal, does does weird things as you've got like a highly inclined orbit like this. 
and you're getting close and start moving quickly, it just like whips around and does all kinds of crazy stuff on you. Um, darn, we are not passing over a promising lake bed. So we may just end up having to land out here on the flats or the highlands or something and just uh, play, it, play it careful on landing. Let's see what we can get. Okay, so let's just go nice and easy with this burn as it will change quite rapidly as you see. So let's just get that nice and low. We'll land, end up landing just past the the pole, I guess. E, that's some uh, so some ugly territory there. Let's. Uh, okay, I'm, I'm done with you, maneuver node. In fact, we are done with maneuver nodes for the duration of this landing, I think. So let's just bring this around close to this point. Oh, I, I can't fast forward any faster than that now because I'm too low. Ooh, okay, yes, we are quite low. All right, so let's. Uh, Wow, look at this. This is just about the worst place I could have decided to land. Actually, you know what? If I chop it really quickly, I can probably land up here, pretty much on the North Pole. I got plenty of fuel in this descent stage, so that's what I'm going to go for, I think. We'll try to drop this down before, before that really ugly stuff over there. So what did that do? That brought us on a descent course. And I can afford to use all the fuel in this stage, so there's really no reason to... Uh, because I can't land with this stage still attached. So there's really no reason to take it easy. Because we're going to have to dump it at the last moment before getting to the surface anyway. So we can pretty much drop straight down. And this area I'm, I'm flying over doesn't look half bad, actually. So I think I might just do that. This is the uh, new landing procedure we are coming up with on the spot. We're just going to fall. We're just going to fall down onto the surface. And we'll go speaking of surface, we'll go ahead and change the surface velocity and begin our carefully metered 12 kilometer fall. <laughs> so we're pretty much directly over our intended landing zone. Uh, well the sun's at quite the angle though so it does mean we won't see our shadow until rather late. But it will be over here somewhere. So let's Keep that on up and fast forward down a bit. Now it's hard to say what altitude this is above, you know, frozen lake bed level as opposed to sea level. Um, I'm going to assume that it's something like three or four thousand meters and approach carefully on that basis. So I'm pretty sure the highest mountains on Minmus are something like five or six thousand. So, feeling pretty okay at the moment. Plus, these uh, even the little lander engine has plenty of power to slow me down, given the low gravity here, here on Minmus. Which is one of the reasons that in previous versions of KSP, I've actually gone for Minmus landings before moon landings, because they, in many ways, are, in fact, easier. Alright, so let's uh, slow this down a little bit as we seem to be getting close. I don't see any ground scatter yet, but we may not we may not get ground scatter here. We are coming down next to a sizable mountain. So that hopefully I'll see my shadow earlier because of that fact. Alright, come on. How high are we? <laughs> Okay, this looked flat from orbit. It is not, in fact, as flat as I had hoped it would be. Um, oh well, we're going for it anyway. I have a quick save from orbit, if worse comes to worse. Oh, is that my shadow? Oh, that's awesome. It's pretty much horizontal for me. Oh wow, oh wow, we are getting, we are getting close. Yeah, look how, look how quickly that shadow is going to come towards us. Yeah, I'm going to have to ditch this stage. Here, let me just about get to a hover. Lose. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Actually, I'm going to get... Let's go up just a little bit. Okay, so now while that's going on, I'm going to lose that stage. Light, light up the lander engine. Deploy the gear. And now hopefully we'll land clear of the debris field. Damn, that's a shame. There was a lot of fuel left on that. <laughs> oh well. We're just sort of falling. And we'll know exactly where the ground is when that thing hits. Yep, there it is. There's the ground. 
So we are coming down. Oh, we are down. Oh, oh, we bounced. We the, it's so little gravity. We bounced right back up in the air just on the compression of the landing struts. All right, score. It is so much easier than landing on the moon. Ah, all right. Oh, I forgot to get my low orbit science. Well, I can get that on the way out. Cool stuff. Cool stuff. Come on. There we go. Mystery goo. We have science. We have science. All right. Congrats, congrats, Philo. Do our various scientific observations. While the material samples are processed, you begin to turn thoughts how much Minmus looks like a mint dessert. I have discovered you are now hungry. For 125 science, we are hungry. We'll also take our crew report prior to disembarking the vehicle. We will EVA. We will EVA report. And we are at space just above the Midlands. <laughs> nice. Now we will carefully fall down to the surface. Whee! Boonk. <laughs> it's like super slow motion here on Minmus. Alright, we will take a surface sample. 150 science. EVA report. We will overwrite the other one because screw it. This one's worth more. And now we will plant our flag in victory. Yeah. This is, uh, what is the name of this site? Minmus Landing 1. Philo was here. <laughs> uh, not creative, but whatever. Deal with it. Alright, congrats, Philo. Congrats. You have successfully made it. And you have not even died or anything. Cool. Screenshot. All right. So, thank you guys for watching. Philo and I clearly have enjoyed it. You see, he's quite happy with the situation. If you like this episode as much as Philo did, go ahead and hit the like button underneath the video. Comment, subscribe, etc. I'm Southern Wolverine, and this has been more Operation Lathe, backwards Operation Lathe, Season 2. And for now, just have a good day.